Hello and welcome to Spark Rugby League. Today we're going to discuss uh, the salary cap and a bit of a disagreement among the Super League clubs. Now, of the 12 clubs, I think it's uh, they're pretty much evenly split on whether we should reduce it or not. Obviously, in the current climate, uh, hoping it will help clubs financially. Now, I think it was, what I saw anyway was uh, Matt Shaw from League Express was basically saying that Salford have the deciding vote on this. Now, uh, I'll come to you first on this, Paul. What what do you think of the the main um, benefits from reducing the salary cap? Is it really necessary? Well, obviously, yeah. I mean, I've seen it before. I, I mean, I, I've always been an advocate of raising it because you know, for, for basically things like the the great English signing. But I mean, you can understand where the clubs are coming from. Um, they're basically saying, obviously, that the, the the income is going to be severely reduced. Well, it is now and going forward to next season. So some clubs are going to be able to spend a lot less. Uh, only going to be able to spend a lot less, and obviously there might be some clubs who might be in a better position than ones, particularly who've got, um, you know, have got multi-million millionaire owners who might be able to spend a bit, might be able to keep to, to the spending that they've got for this season. So what they're saying is obviously it's going to affect the integrity of the competition. The idea of a salary cap is that everybody's pretty much spends the same. Where what 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 they're saying is for next season that that that's going to be severely impacted. Where you might get, you know, the, the well obviously the six clubs. Uh, from you know, Castleford, Wakefield, Leeds, Hull are saying that you know that their, their finance can be really impacted. So some clubs are spending twice as much as others. That could hit the integrity of the competition. I think that's basically what it's about. Well, I think it's interesting that it's almost like a split. It's almost like the Yorkshire clubs and the Lancashire and the rest of the clubs. It's it's a split down the middle, isn't it? Um, and I think it was interesting that one of the first moves they made was actually to take away the minimum salary for young players so that clubs yeah. can now pay them less money which I think got a bit of a backlash from players yeah. um, I think if we are trying to save money in this current climate Jack what is reducing the salary cap the best way to go about it I can again like Paul mentioned I can see where they're coming from in the you know reducing the maximum amount clubs can spend takes away that that sort of temptation to keep going out there and and spending money on players um, and I think the way we're seeing things happen at the moment you know a lot of players I think almost all players have been furloughed now um, you know that, that that's I mean that was obviously the first step at um, you know at, at trying to help clubs financially and um, in, in terms of reducing the salary cap going forward I think you know the, the one thing we've got to think about is that Rugby League will be hit hard financially as a whole by this pandemic. You know, we've talked about it for, for a fair few weeks now. Um, you know, gate receipts, all the money you get from from all the match day um, goings on, you know, you know your, your food stalls, um, your drinks, your programmes, your uh, raffle ticket sales. You know, that, 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 that's like the main, um, you know, the main cash source for, for a lot of clubs, you know, the main, in, the main income. So with that not there... That's going to hit teams a lot financially, you know. And then, and the more this goes on, this pandemic, the more um, you know the extensions we see on the on the suspension of the season. That's just going to get worse, you know. So things do have to be put in place, obviously, then to secure the future of clubs financially. Because the one fear that we've all had is that clubs will go under, and that is still a possibility, distinctly. Um, pardon me. Um, reducing the salary cap, though, I think it's a weird one you can see again you can see both sides of the argument um you've got a lot of clubs who will see the reducing the salary cap having an effect on their squad you know obviously if, if clubs are needing to now reduce their overall wage bill they're either going to have unhappy players because you know once it, once they are being paid by the club again they won't be on the same salaries or at least a lot of them won't especially those on the top money they won't be on the same salaries or they're going to have to offload players which then again reduces the quality in their side and probably for a lot of them, um, the quality of the overall competition. You know, we mentioned the Greg English signing. Would that have been feasible if we were on a reduced salary cap? You know, you, you'd probably have to say no, it wouldn't. Um, and that'll be a, it'll be a similar case for a lot of the clubs. You know, the the, the big players, the, the big money players that they don't have on marquee contracts. You know, will will. You know, either have to be sold or, or, on, or be on a significantly reduced wage, and then you look at you know Australian clubs again who could tempt them with with bigger money, and that's always been the problem with first. So, I think reducing the salary cap would potentially do that even more. 
you know, it, it opened players' minds up to the opportunity of going down under um, if they are guaranteed more money. Yeah, and I think when you were saying that then, I think Toronto definitely came into my mind. I mean, they're struggling to to get a squad under the current cap. So, exactly, yeah. I mean, I don't know what would happen to them. I'll come to you on this, Trev. Well, what do you make of it? I mean, I think the main thing for us at the moment here is to ensure that every club survives through this. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Go on, man. Yeah, no, basically, I think it's time that the... Because obviously now the Super League is ran by itself away from the RFL because that's what the clubs wanted and so they got what they wanted. And I think it's now it's time for the Super League clubs in Boston, the CEOs and that get together with head of competition and sit down with Sky Channel or Sky Sports and say, let's redo this TV deal. Okay, I know I'm going to use what we do down here in the NRL and that because obviously we have our games played uh, live over from the Thursday all the way through to the Sunday. Maybe it's something that the Super League need to look at. Instead of having everyone play on a Thursday or Friday night and the odd game on the Sunday, spread out the games over the time from the Thursday through to the Sunday, having the games on TV, possibly generate more money for sponsorships and hopefully uh, get better commercial value, which will hopefully, in theory, see... Uh, the financial um, value for the clubs to be better off. Yeah, and I think there was an article in the Daily Mail uh, earlier this week that was talking about how Sky are going to stick to the current deal to help see out the Super League season behind closed doors. Um, and I think that is the big thing, what you've touched on there, is the TV deal. When when all this is over, we, we need a, a good deal um, to help the sport yeah, because... recover financially. Well, not just that as well. Right? I know, for example, say I was a CEO of, say, Coca-Cola, for example, and Wigan came to me and said, oh, we want you to be our major sponsor. I'm going to be like, okay, fair enough, but what do I actually get from it? The odd TV game once every couple of weeks? But can you imagine if you, if the clubs were playing every week on TV, more exposure, hopefully bringing more sponsors, for them to be on jerseys and better money as well, because they can sell the have the advertising space on their jerseys for much more money because they're getting shown on national TV. I think again, that all sort of comes down to what is the primary sport though per country. I mean, like in Australia, obviously rugby league is one of, if not the big, you know, the, the biggest sport over there. You know, it, you know, it's probably rivaled by Australian rules, but I think it probably rules the roost overall. And over here, we've got a similar thing with football. You know, soccer, yeah, football, right. call it. You know, that's obviously the principal sport and, and demands most of the weekend's television. You know, that, that that's what's primarily on, on, on TV on a weekend, apart from the Thursday and Friday evening and, and the odd Saturday, Sunday sort that rugby league gets. You've then also got to balance rugby union as well, um, which is obviously huge over here, um, as well as several other sort of, you know, what, what would be sort of generally considered uh, more minority sports. Um, you know, you, you've got so much sport going on over the weekends that over here, rugby league probably isn't in Sky, well, particularly Sky's mind as being one of their, you know, their, their, their top viewed sports. You know, they'll get so much more money from from showing the same amount of, of football games or rugby union games than they would from showing an entire round of Super League. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. And that's uh, without doubt, and I agree with you there. Like, it's probably better for Sky to go with a rugby union or a football. But at the same time, this is where people just need to stop making excuses and put the pressure on uh, Sky Sports. Because in the day, you know, if we're just going to sit back and be dictated to by Sky Sports on how the, our game is going to be played and when it's going to be played, you know, it's not going to, like, you know, we, we, we've got to try to move forward. And, and that's what we need to do. Yeah, sorry, I think there's a good chance the likes of Catalans here as well. Obviously, France has shut down sports-wise until September. If we can get Catalans back one way or another, maybe they might have to play over here. Uh, I mean, they used to have a, a, a TV deal over there where all their games were televised. I, I, I mean, just the same. As, I mean, I think we all watched the Bundesliga last weekend because we're all just wanting some sports to watch. I think, you know, I think this, I really think there could be an opportunity if, you know, if, if Catalans would come back in, in July to maybe get a TV deal with the with the French TV companies, and as for our games, 
I, I mean, I don't see the point in a behind closed doors game not being televised. I mean, it has to be televised for the club's season ticket holders for starters. But I, I, I mean, I've said this before. I'd be looking towards the BBC or ITV or even Channel Four. Let's get a few games on terrestrial TV. Let's show the world. Let's show the country what a brilliant product we've got. Um, you know, obviously we get the money from Sky. They can have, they can have the first choice, but you know. Castleford against Wakefield, that would be tremendous. You know, if we could even put that on the red button, that would be a tremendous watch for viewers at home. We've not got much sport to deal with. OK, the Premier League would be by then, but I really think we need to be looking towards the terrestrial channels to, 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 to well, get actually, the profile of the sport out there. Well, that's it, and I agree with you, Paul. So, over here in Australia, we have Channel 9, which is free to air, and obviously Fox Sports, which is your pay TV. Channel 9 gets their choice of the Thursday and Friday night, and one of the Sunday afternoon games, and then Fox Sports gets the rest. Yeah, that's, that, that's what should happen here, Trev. I've always said that's what we should be doing here. It's a brilliant idea. I think, again, the only issue arises in the two, the, you know, you probably say for all the, the British TV companies, you like to see Sky Sports, your BBC, you know, your ITV, that to a certain extent, rugby league is expendable to them. It's not going to, yeah. as, as, as much as we, we would love to, um, you know, to obviously grow the sport and have so much rugby league on TV, it's not going to be a huge dent to their pockets if rugby league wasn't there. Which is why I think there's so much fragility around how that you know those TV deals are approached. At the end of the day, you know, Sky could turn around and say, right, no, we don't want rugby league. We'll just whack through the football games on that will probably get a fairly similar viewing, if not more. You know, that that that's where we're at with the rugby league, you know, TV deal. I think you know we're, we're not in a position as a sport to start demanding that all games are on TV. We're just simply not. You know, we we, we don't have that sort of power. Mm. You know, the power at the end of the day lies with um, the you know Sky Sports, who probably you know Super League and rugby league probably relies on Sky Sports more than Sky Sports is relying on rugby league. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent it is, and that's why and that's what I'm saying. You know, like if Sky Sports only want to show one game on a Thursday, one game on a Friday, why not we are like a BBC or an ITV have the opportunity to play the other, um, show the other games that aren't um, live? So again, that could well cause friction, you know, between, you know, the, the, with, between the RFL, Rugby League, whatever, and Sky Sports. You know, at the end of the day, Sky Sports have got exclusive coverage of Super League. You can't just, you know, suddenly sign that deal and say, right, we'll go try and shot these other three games on a weekend to, to be to BBC or ITV, you know, Sky Sports aren't going to like that. They like the fact they've got the exclusivity of the coverage um, and, and there's a good chance they probably wouldn't be willing to share it. Oh, that's something yeah. they have to look at when it comes to the next TV deal. Yeah, that's a fair point. To be, that is uh, yeah, point. I think that point Jack's just made is right because look, they have all the rights to the championship and they don't show it, which exactly. shows that they want that exclusivity. The but go on, Trev. Oh, no, I like... I know I'm well aware that Sky Sports has the rights to the games and that. And like, I just think if you're not going to show the game, let someone else show it. Yeah, I agree. But it's, it's a difficult situation. I think we've probably done a little bit off topic, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was worth it, though. Sorry, guys. It is, it is, it is right. lockdown, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, in one word, <laughs> would you reduce <laughs> your salary cap? Oh. No. Jack? No. Trev? No, not at all. Well, I think that's pretty comprehensive. It's a no from us, but we'll see what happens. Seems to be a split in Super League. Um, let us know in the comments, guys, if you would reduce the salary cap. Let us know also how we can get a better TV deal. How should we go about it? Um, please like this video. Have a look at our YouTube page. We've got a load of videos on there. Please, uh, please like them all. Please subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.